What's up guys? Um, today I'm gonna be diving into Shug's Mechanic Guitar Workshop number three. I almost said two, it's number three. In the last session we did um, a little bit of pick attack for a better tone. The lesson before that we talked about how to hold the pick for a more controlled pick hold. So if you really look backwards, we're, we're, we're moving forwards in how we go from the way we hold our pick to the way we use our pick and now we're gonna talk about ways to interface with the strings, kind of taking advantage of human anatomy and guitar anatomy, which reminds me, I actually meant to pin that. Let's see if I can do that real quick. How do you even pin? I don't even know how to do this. Let me see. Nope. All right, guys. Um, anyways, moving forward. So what I want to talk to you guys today about is specifically how we move across the strings to take advantage of everything. So in other words, there's a slew of options we have here, right? Like we can go straight up and down, we could go this way, we could use my wrist to go like that, I could use my arm to go like that, I could go forwards. There's so many different opportunities and directions that we could take this. And one of the things that I wanna point out is that there is one that sounds and works the best for guitar anatomy and the anatomy of the human body. I wanna to talk to you guys about that. I call this idea home position. This is something I stumbled on many, many years ago in my own like research and studies on how to just find the best, most effective tone, on how to make it standardized. Cause that's, that's my method is trying to like standardize ideas and approaches so I could kind of set it and forget it. Easy big oven life. Um, so really quickly, let's do a little tone test. If you guys wanna follow along, that's awesome. I'm playing a seven string, but I'm gonna ignore the seven string for now. So on the E string, let's go ahead and find Josh Walraven, one of my old students. He was a massive, massive uh, absorber of this idea and it changed the way he was playing, it was awesome. Um, so really quick, if you wanna go ahead and grab a guitar and do this with me, I'm gonna play on the low E string. <laughs> And I want you to explore from here to here all the different tone differences that happen. It almost sounds as if like someone's hitting a switch where like they're up here, it's super trebly, and then they put the mids all fucking hot, and then it goes to bassy. Listen to this one more time. Mids, bassy, and wonky, right? So there's definitely a sweet spot on this string. Let's find the spot where the bass note, which is a lower end string, sounds best. So if really quick, if we can point out that the bass is happening down on this side of the string, towards the neck, and then the treble is added towards here, wouldn't it make sense that we wanna add treble to a bass string? So let's explore with this side and see where the sweet spot is. And there's actually a spot where the frequency switches and balances. You'll probably hear it on your side more than you will on a Skype or on a, a live Instagram stream, but check this out. Can you hear that? Can you hear where there's like a presence and a snap and a brightness and a clarity that enters? Right there. And then it disappears, watch. So what that is, believe it or not, it's right here in front of this pickup, the little like cliff drop off right where this, this pickup ends. Let's discover the next string. Yo, Wesley Skies. Dude's a fucking incredible vocalist. Go follow this guy. Super, super sick. Always putting out cool content. The next string, let's try the A string. Same thing, right? If I go this way, it's adding bass. It gets a little bit wonky and loses clarity. It gets a little dull. If I go here, it's all bright, all harsh. Let's find the sweet spot, the, uh, the Goldilocks zone, right? Perfect. And by nature of what we'll be discovering, it is a little bit ahead of the string before it. Let's go to the D string. Right there, right? It's almost obvious. So we have so far, these are the bright, loud, frequency balanced spots on my string, Charlie Robbins. My boy, love that guy. Go say what's up to Charlie if you guys don't know him. His fucking playing is beautiful. So, and then we go to the G string and we're following the, uh, the pattern here. So we're gonna go a little bit forward. You can hear how this sounds super bright. Once you go to the unwound strings, it's really, really obvious, right? All up here, sh shrill. Oh, oh, ah, oh. So there's this thing that happens where the string 
literally like becomes alive. It awakens and is balanced at the frequency and the way it's supposed to resonate. Um, so, so far, I'm pretty sure you could see what's happening right here. Let's finish it out. B string, E string. The premise here is that we're now following a 45 degree angle from the inside of this pickup to the inside of this pickup. And by sticking on this track, you're effectively staying on course for the best tone per string, no matter what. I call this home position. Um, it's the idea that every string has a home and a proper position to be optimal, right? You're, you're trying to interface with your strings properly. So that being said, we have this 45 degree angle that I'm sitting on, right? Notice something real quick. I have a 45 degree angle already in my fucking arm, right? Isn't my arm already sitting on that line? Isn't my thumb already sitting on that 45 degree angle? Aren't my fingers, if I just open them forward, already sitting on that angle? My index finger, isn't it sitting on the same 45 degree angle as my thumb, as my arm? It's insane. Shoot, 30 seconds of watching this. Ah, Wesley, that's freaking awesome, dude. I hope it helps you, man. Like, it's a, such a simple thing to add to your playing. It changes the fucking game. Um, so yeah, what we're doing is we have these 45 degree angles. I call this the law of 45 degrees. It's everywhere in guitar playing. Take note of that. So then the question becomes, all right, I have this 45 degree angle that I'm traveling on. What do I do with that? How do I think about this to make it really, really effective and simple? To me, it's like, uh, you know, bowling bumpers that you put down like the, the gutter ball lane so you make sure you don't bounce back and forth. I imagine there's that on the sides of my arm. It's like a highway, a lane highway, or a highway lane, I'm sorry. It's my arm travels across that. So then there's a, me a mechanic that's going on in here that might be a little bit confusing to some. How do we make my arm move across this way while having freedom in my wrist? Simple. Instead of, like a lot of people will do this thing, you've probably seen this before, like uh, the idea, I call this the banana peel. It's the idea that you reach from here and then you go down to here with your wrist. So you actually have to master six different positions. You have to get good at this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And each one, you're getting progressively worse in tone. What's the fucking thought behind that? It makes no sense. Why not make our hand work the same across all six strings and sound the best? Right, balanced, creamy, sultry, fucking good stuff. So the method is rather than banana peel, or a lot of times people use only elbow, right? So then it becomes this thing, like, little jerking off motion, yeah, good stuff. And then the other option is like, what if we just use our shoulder? Then we're fucking yo-hoing like a pirate. So instead of jerking off like a pirate, we need to basically use, imagine you're punching in this direction, right? If I'm punching in this direction, notice the way my shoulder rotates and the way my elbow opens up to keep my wrist forward, to keep this locked and straight. This is where my control comes from and this is where the power is. So, to go deeper than that, I have three points of contact supporting this. I have contact point number one on the bow of my guitar, contact point number two on my wrist, and these serve as my two axles moving across the home position road, the highway that we talked about, right? It's like a car moving across the lane and the engine is my wrist and the steering wheel is the pick. Where my pick goes is where I go. It's a very, very, very simple idea. And like, there's a lot of times too where you go and you take the artistic approach where it's like, all right, like if I'm riffing, I want a little bit more attack on those strings so I can break the rule. Right, like give, give yourself a little more snap and attack. But then you have. Do you hear the, the chime? Versus, kill me please, right? So the idea is, from here you're activating, and it's very, very simple. If you think about it, there's all these harmonic chimes that exist all across these strings, and you're literally just activating frequencies underneath 
the note, like inside of um, any note, let's say we're playing an, an E, inside of that note exists the fourth and fifth already. What I suspect, as far as the science behind this goes, I suspect that what's happening is you're activating the proper supporting notes to resonate. Like if I'm hitting this, this G note, in my proper spot, not here, hear the difference? I'm activating the fourth and fifth properly so it's a full, bold sounding note. If I don't do that, then it starts to lose that shit and I actually might bring in resonation or resonant uh, tones that I don't want, things that make the tone a little bit worse. So again, we have three points of contact. We have the arm, we have the wrist, these are axles, and then we have the wrist is my engine and then the pick itself is the wheel. The last thing that I want to end off on this, because this is, I'm trying to make these quick lessons for you guys, about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the last thing I want to say here is that I'm not here to tell you that you're doing anything wrong. Everything you're doing is already right because you're doing it. I'm here to give you a little bit of a kick in the ass and maybe a perspective shift to hopefully, hopefully get you to think about things a little bit differently, to try some things differently, to experiment. That's where all of my revelations came from and my own experiences and my own experiments. And I like to share that shit with you guys because it's fun for me. It's fun to uh, open up my mind and get your guys' feedback and hopefully help some of you guys. Maybe some of you guys ask questions that help me understand this more. It's all a win. Um, so that being said, guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed Shook's Mechanic Workshop number three. I'll try to do this next Sunday. I got slammed this past weekend, so I had to do it today. But other than that, guys, I freaking love you. If you want to link up for lessons, Hit me up, uh, shoot me a message, or go to dansugarmanlessons at gmail.com. Shoot me an email, or everfret.com slash danlessons. All in all, I freaking love you guys. I'll see you very, very soon. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.